morning, scholars, and happy Monday. I am so excited that you are here today with me. Did you have a wonderful weekend? I did too. I am so excited for us to get started on our reading journey this week. Remember, we've been doing author studies. So every single week, we've been learning about a different author. So far, we've learned about Melanie Watt, Jory John, and this week we're gonna learn about a completely new author who's actually one of my absolute favorite authors just because of how amazing his characters are. So you're gonna to to stick around to learn who our author of the week is going to be. Okay, scholars, let's see who we're gonna be learning about this whole entire week. Drum roll, his name is Mo Willems. Say Mo Willems. Yes, Mo Willems. And let's learn a couple facts about Mo Willems and see what he looks like. Here is Mo. Say hello, Mo. And he is with two of our characters that we're going to be meeting this week. These are some of his most popular characters as well. And we're going to learn about them in just a couple seconds. But first, let's learn some facts about Mo Willems. The first one is that he began his career before writing books as a writer for the show Sesame Street. Raise your hand if you've seen Sesame Street before. Do you like Elmo? Cookie Monster? Yeah, he was a writer for Sesame Street. Talk about super cool. Another thing that's really awesome about Mo is that he's not just an author. He's an author and an illustrator. So he's an author and an illustrator. Remember, an author is someone who writes the stories, and an illustrator is someone who draws the pictures. So he does both. He writes his stories and he draws the pictures in them. So that is super great. What other author that we've done so far is an author and an illustrator? It was a girl. Yes, it was Melanie Watts. Remember all of her books about Scaredy Squirrel? She was the author and the illustrator of all of those books. So Mo Willems is also an author and an illustrator similar to Melanie Watt. Another amazing thing about Mo Willems is that he has so many awards for his books. Remember, last week when we talked about Jory John, he had an award, remember that medal, that little silver medal that was on his book? That stood for something, that was a medal. Well, Mo Willems has so, so, so many medals on his books. He has so many awards for how great he's been as an author. And later this week, I'm gonna show you and tell you about all of the different honors he has gotten for all of the amazing hard work that he has done as an author and an illustrator. Okay, let's take a look at some of the characters that we'll be seeing this week and some of the characters that are well known by Mo Willems in his books. Let's take a look at our picture. So far I see one, two, three, four, five characters. This week we're only going to meet four of those. We're not going to meet the fifth one, but we're going to meet some other ones in other stories by him as well. His most popular characters are Elephant and Piggy. The elephant's name is Gerald and the piggy's name is Piggy. And then we have the pigeon and the duckling. This week we're gonna be reading two books about the pigeon, but the duckling's actually not gonna be in any of them. Sometimes the pigeon books have pigeon and duckling, but this week we're only gonna be doing pigeon books for instead of pigeon and duckling. And then we have Nuffle Bunny, which Miss Castle spelled it wrong, whoops. But it's not just called Nuffle Bunny, it was called Knuffle Bunny. So a lot of times when people look at it, they say the story is called Nuffle Bunny, but the word knuffle instead of nuffle means snuggle in a different language. So it's like a snuggle bunny. So knuffle bunny. In the story that we're going to be reading today, our character is going to be horrified. Say horrified. Yes, horrified. What does it mean to be horrified? Yes, it means when you are so shocked about something and frightened and you are afraid that something terrible is going to happen to you, you are horrified. In our story today, we're going to have somebody who is horrified. Who do you think it might be? Maybe. We don't even know what the book is yet, but you might already have some ideas because of the characters that we just saw on the last page. You might have an idea which one maybe is going to be. You're already trying to predict as a great scholar who might be horrified in our story. Another word that we're going to be doing in this book, which are two. So we have horrified, and now we're doing the word content. Say content. Yes, being content is when you're happy with something that you have, and you don't want anything else. So when you are so, so happy about something, and you don't want anything else, you are content. 
In this picture, I see that they are content eating ice cream. They don't need anything else because they are so content that they have an ice cream cone to eat. So in our story, our character is going to be very content about something. It's going to be our job in the, when we read the book to figure out when is he content. Okay, last thing we're going to do before I show you the book is give you some tips of what we're going to be looking for when we read the story. So in the story today, there's a couple things I want you to do. First, I want you to figure out who is the main character. Then I want you thinking, where is the setting? Then I want you to think, what happens in the story? The beginning, what happens in the middle, and what happens at the end? Beginning, middle, end. I want you to think, when was our character going to be horrified? When is our character content? So those are the two things, horrified and content. Are you ready to see who is our story's main character? Are you ready to see what story we're going to be reading today? I am. The story is The Pigeon Needs a Bath. The Pigeon Needs a Bath. And he says, no, I don't. No, I do not. I don't need a bath. So we're going to see what happens in the story with the pigeon. I bet you already have some ideas of what's going to happen to the pigeon. So come along and enjoy the story today. Hi. I don't know if you've noticed, but the pigeon is filthy. So I could use your help because the pigeon needs a bath. That is a matter of opinion. I took one last month. I think it was last month. Scratch, 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 scratch. Clean, dirty. They're just words, right? I feel clean. Maybe you need a bath. Yeah. When was the last time you had a bath? Oh, that was pretty recently. Life is so short. Why waste it on unimportant things like taking a bath? What smell? I don't smell anything. <laughs> and if I do, it's a very normal smell for a pigeon. You know, in some places it is impolite to bathe. Bzzz, bzzz. All of these flies buzzing around me are purely coincidental. Bzzz. Let's get out of here, P.U. Take a bath, dude. Bzzz. Ew. Bzzz. Okay, fine. If it means so much to you, I'll take a bath. Scholars, why do you think the pigeon is horrified to take a bath? Whoa. I'm not going to like this one bit. The water is too hot, too cold, too lukewarm, too hot, too wet, too cold, not enough toys, too many toys, too deep, not deep enough, too cold, now it's too hot again, too reflective, this is still too hot. Well, I guess this is okay. Splash! Hey, this is fun! Wash, 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 washy! La, 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 singing in the top! La, 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 la! This is the life! Scholars, I noticed that the pigeon's feelings towards taking a bath have changed. How is the pigeon feeling now? Is he content or horrified about taking a bath? I love bubbles! Look at my wrinkly toes! Hello? Hello? How are you? I'm fine. Squeak, squeak. I'm a fish. I'm a fish. Ten hours later. Can I stay in the tub forever? Oh, that pigeon was so silly. He didn't want to take a bath. Have you ever had that problem before? You were told, hey, it's bath time, and you're just like, I don't want to take a bath. When I was a kid, I kind of did that too. I just wanted to keep playing. I didn't want to stop what I was doing to take a bath. No, thank you. So in our story, the pigeon also didn't want to take a bath. 
But he didn't want to take a bath so badly that he was horrified. Remember, he was just like, oh, the idea of taking a bath was the worst thing ever. And he was so horrified of all the steps to get into the bath. He was like, the water's too hot. The water's too cold. The water's too deep. He was doing every single excuse to not take his bath. He did not want to take his bath. Scholars, what happened at the end once he did get into the bathtub? Yeah, at the end, he was so excited. Remember at the end, it was like 10 hours later. And he was still in the bathtub. And he was like, I can stay in here forever. He wanted to stay in the bathtub. So the thing is, is even though he really, really, really didn't want to take a bath at all, at the end, he was like, you know what? It's not that bad. And he liked the bath. So at the end, he was content with taking a bath. So content that he didn't even want to get out. Yeah, I agree. I think it was hilarious. And I loved it too. Okay, there's only one step left I need you to do for me, scholars. I need you to click the link below and fill out the one or two questions about our story. I cannot wait to see how much you liked it. And I cannot wait to read your answers for our story. I will see you again tomorrow as we do a completely new story by Mo Willems. Have a great rest of the day, scholars. Goodbye.